Hello again, this is Roy Nyswanger from MotleyPixel.com. Today I want to give you a, a brief video tour on the new Cactus Wireless Flash Transceiver V5 Duo system. That's these puppies in this box. Uh, and this video will be brief, it's just going to show you what's in the box, some highlights about the product. First, before I begin though, I want to extend my gratitude to Gadget Infinity, Harvest One Limited, uh, for including me in the beta test of these wireless flash triggers. I'm one of approximately 10 beta testers throughout the world who were sent these units to test. Uh, over the past three weeks, uh, we discussed our findings of putting these triggers through their paces on a private discussion forum, and we are all in agreement that these are fabulous flash triggers. Okay. Let's get started with what's in the box. First you'll notice if you did buy the version 4's, the Cactus version 4's, the box is very similar, just slightly larger. So let's pop into the box here. <clears throat> Inside the box you're going to have a manual, a sample photo album, and of course the wireless transceivers. There are two of them. And associated stands and also the PC cables, various PC cables, and PC cable adapters. Okay, the first thing that you're going to notice uh, very quickly is that both units look identical. And the main reason for that is that these are transceivers, just like pocket wizards, meaning that each unit has a mode switch to either transmitter, off, or receiver. Very nice. Um, so naturally, when someone buys this set, one will be a transmitter, one will be a receiver. Okay, let's talk about the components of the transceivers. You have a female hot shoe on top, male hot shoe on bottom, female umbrella swivel spigot lug, on the bottom here. You have a channel mode dial here. Uh, we have the battery compartment, which by the way, these do come with four AAA Gold Peak alkaline batteries. It's a spring-loaded compartment, very, very nice. You have a status LED here, test button here, and a sync port here. And on this side, you have the mode switch, transmit, off, or receive. Okay, now let's talk about the key features of these transmitters. Uh, the most important key feature, I feel, in my opinion, about these transmitters is that, from my experience, these have delivered the best quality of service just in the fundamental aspect of triggering a flash wirelessly. I have had zero, zero failure rate in all of my tests. Uh, the only time I see an errant flash trigger is if I... Uh, have the system on and I'm mounting or removing a flash or I have the flash on a receiver and I'm and I have the transmitter on and I put it on a camera it may fire the flash but after that everything is solid no misfires for me so far uh, the quality of service um, uh, of these systems like I said second to none much better than the V2S's uh, the V4's uh, the CTR 301s, those are all the ones that I've tested. How it can do this is through a special circuit called frequency self-tune. And all that does, just think of it as a, a smart circuit algorithm built into the solid state circuitry such that the first 10 triggers, it's going to measure an average and then strike the best communication channel across that average. So it really, really helps boast the quality of service during your photo sessions. Next thing I want to talk about is max sync speed. These handle it pretty much flawlessly. The Nikon D40 can support up to one one thousandth of a second. These can do it. I have a 40D, Canon 40D, and a Canon EOS 5D Mark II, both at one two fiftieth of a second sync and one two hundredth of a second sync, no problem. Range advertised at 100 meters. I haven't tested it, but many have on the forum no problems at 100 meters. In fact, many have gone well beyond 100 meters. The way I tested it is I have a two-story home. I had the receiver and flash on the, on, on the 
second floor at one end of the house. I went to the first floor at the other side of the house and it triggered flawlessly. That's through several walls and one floor. So that's awesome. Uh, two hot shoes. This is really, really cool. You got a male hot shoe and a female hot shoe. This is sweet because now on camera as a transmitter, you can have on access lighting and a flash on your camera while you're remotely triggering other flashes in your studio. Very, very, very nice. Um, also, this supports what's called multi-channel triggering. Multi-channel triggering, basically, um, that's just going to limit the amount of travel back and forth to all your flashes in your studio. You can basically control from the transmitter on the camera which flashes in your studio fire. Let's see. And the last thing I would like to talk about is um, the optional remote trigger cable and the functionality of a wireless remote shutter. With an optional cable that I'm assuming will be available when these hit the market, you have to select, of course, the camera model that you have. Um, basically, all you do is plug the cable into one of the transceivers, plug this in into your camera, place this to receiver, uh, put it on channel one, for instance, then take the other one, put it on transmit, put it on channel one, and there you have a remote wireless shutter. Very, very nice added feature to this duo. Uh, I spent $20 on a third party remote wireless trigger shown here, the Fotix. Fotix, if that's how you say it. So that's $20 savings. That's really, really nice. Okay, now that I've said so many good positive things about the units, you're probably all asking, well, there's got to be something that's not so good. And as with everything, just about everything, there are always some cons. And in this case, I feel it's very minor because it's easily um, workable and there are workarounds for it. The main thing that most people um, discovered with these units and their new design is the use of an umbrella swivel and how it mounts to an un umbrella swivel. Because of this location, the male hot shoe um, interferes with the spigot nut here. And so there are several ways around this. Um, the, way I, the way I end up doing this actually is taking the spigot out, screwing it into the transceiver first, and then I put it into here. <clears throat> and I actually lift it up some, uh, about right there. And then I tighten it down snugly like such. And it seemed to work well for me. It's not as stable. Um, there are other options here. You can use a um, cold shoe. Basically, uh, um, have a cold shoe screwed into your spigot. So you're going to have your spigot back in your umbrella swivel. You'll have a cold shoe here. And then you'll slide the uh, transceiver onto the cold shoe and lock it down to the cold shoe. That's the other option. Outside of that, there are really no other problems with these units. Um, they're very versatile. Um, I think they're great units. Uh, before I received these to beta test, I've been using the Young Nuo. Um, no, not the Young Nuo. I think it may be Young Nuo. CTR301s. They're a transmitter receiver design. They work well, but if anyone's in the market for the CTR301s, please let me know because I'll probably end up selling those off and staying with the Cactus V5s. So let's wrap this up in summary. Um, they're great units. Um, uh, we are complete in the beta test. Gadgetinfinity.com uh, will be releasing this as retail to the public very soon. It's January 7th, 2011. Expect it sometime later this month. Very, very, very soon. Also, the price point is going to be very, very similar to the V4s. I can't, uh, can't release any specifics there, but you need not worry there. Uh, they will be priced very competitively. And last, on MotleyPixel.com, I have the soft copy of the manual available for download. This video review will be there, of course, and also uh, a written-up review that, uh, that uh, I've written up 
and has further details on some testing that I and others have done as well. Thanks again for watching and uh, stay tuned for future reviews.